Okay, so those are the three main ways of knowing when you're ovulating. So your, your temperature is gonna go down and then back up. Your cervix is going to rise. Um, that's because of the effect that the estrogen levels have on the ligaments holding your cervix in place. It's gonna cause it to rise up and open, um, letting the sperm in. And your cervical mucus is gonna turn into snot. Like, weirdness. Um, okay, now we're going to talk about how to time your intercourse. When should you have sex? All the time. Okay, we're done. We're done. No, okay. <laughs> all right, definitely have sex all the time. But um, <laughs> you're going to want to concentrate your sex every day um, from the time your cervical mucus turns to creamy until and through to the end of the egg white cervical mucus. So that's why you gotta pay attention to your mucus. Yes. Um, when you start charting your temperature, you know, charting your cycles, you'll start noticing these changes. You need to pay attention to how many, um, how many creamy days you have leading up to ovulation. This definitely comes into play if there is a male factor fertility issue, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so as soon as you start noticing the switch to creamy, you need to start having sex. And make sure you definitely have sex on the day that you ovulate because that's like a home run. <laughs> I mean, you gotta make sure that it's there. You have sex so many days in advance because, um, one, the sperm needs to be there. As soon as that cervix opens up, the sperm needs to be available, and the sperm can live for multiple days inside of you. Awesome, huh? <laughs> okay. How often do you have sex? You need to have sex during this, uh, what I'm going to refer to as a fertile window, every day. Have it every day. Um, most of the time that's like about six days, five days of creamy cervical mucus, one day that you ovulate, and then after you ovulate, there's really no point. I mean, except for the fact that you love your husband and you want to be with him forever and mwah, mwah, mwah. But I mean, as far as baby making, there's really no point. So now what do you do if there is male factor infertility? Male factor infertility, for those of you who don't know, um, it's if your sperm count is low, if there's low motility, um, which is how many of them are actually moving, or low morphology, which is how many of them are like built correctly. There's all different kinds of sperm. There's not just one kind of sperm. There's sperm with like two heads, and there's killer sperm, and there's crazy sperm, and then there's the good sperm that make babies. So that is the percentage of how many of them can make babies. Isn't that right? Yeah. So um, this can be all be tested really easily. You go to the clinic, the man does his business, you get the results a couple days later, and you know. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to deal with it. So, but if, if you do, um, then it's easy to work around. When I was saying earlier about knowing how many days of creamy cervical mucus you have, this is when it comes into play. Let's say you have five days of creamy cervical, cervical mucus and then one day of egg white. So that's six days in total. If you have male factor infertility, you're going to skip having sex the first day of, of the creamy. You're gonna have it, sex on the second and the fourth day and then also on the sixth day, which is the day that you ovulate and the day that you have the egg white cervical fluid. That's easy, right? So you just want to take advantage and use the, have sex as many times as you can in that window. Uh, so if you have four days of creamy and one day of egg white, then you have it the first, the third, and the fifth. Right? Easy. If you only have two days of creamy, you have it on the first, and then the day that you ovulate. Abstain the second day of creamy. This all makes sense. Um, if for some reason, you know, you're expecting to have five days and you end up only having four days and it throws your whole schedule off, make sure that you have sex on the day that you ovulate, but really don't stress out about it. It's not a big deal. So we all have this goal of making a baby. And we need to realize that um, although we're kind of at a disadvantage because we have fertility issues, even the people that are totally normal, <laughs> those normal people that don't have any issue getting knocked up, they actually only have a 20% chance of getting pregnant every cycle. We're at a disadvantage, and I know that like every month seems precious, but just be patient. Try to get to know your body as well as you can and predict ovulation as closely as you can, and then, you know, lock yourself in the bedroom and have fun. Good advice.
guys, huh? All right, so if you have anything to add, um, I would love video responses. Let's start this trend of doing video responses in the TTC channel. I want to see all your beautiful faces. You guys are all beauties. Beauties. Um, but leave comments, subscribe, rate. Let's grow this channel, everybody. All right? Bye, everyone. You say bye? <laughs>